even answering the questions because I don't have answers. Nobody has answers, right? It's all subjective. But I would like to reflect on a few subjects that you guys suggested on the Facebook. A uh, few people asked about, um, well, it's the same old uh, uh, topic that everybody interested in, right? Uh, love, passion, infidelity, dating. By no means I want to play a role of dating expert. It's just not something that I'm interested in and uh, by no means I'm not expert. But, first of all, I do have very balanced, very fulfilling relationship with my husband and we are very successful at doing what we do. We run a business that is uh, financially successful and very fulfilling. So, based on that fact, I would like to share some insights and if there is some use for you from that, that's fantastic and if not, then just discard it. It's just thoughts and I'm not going to uh, rush it. Please allow the space for yourself and for me just to be in the space, to share the space and to witness whatever will be happening over here. Okay? So I think I would like to start almost backward. I would like to start with the first question I was asked today. Um, Mike, thank you very much for the question. Infidelity. By no means I want to tell you what is right or what is wrong. You know my uh, stand on that one. There is nothing right and there is nothing wrong. We just do what we can do the best at any given moment. And I'm not going to talk about morality or social norms because those definitions are completely irrelevant in my life. I don't operate from the standpoint of morality. I operate from the inner feeling of integrity. And it's absolutely not objective. Nobody can ever impose on you what is integrity. You just feel it. You feel it and you can stand by definition of it which will be different in different times of your life. So all I invite you to do, and I always advocate it very strongly as you know, is to be brutally honest with yourself about are you in integrity or are you not? And again, the same events or the same behavior at a different time of your life can be by you categorized as within integrity or out of integrity. There is no universal categorization of that. It all depends on what are the circumstances and what is your inner state that correspond to that. So infidelity, right? We're talking about, and again, it's all about definition. My assumption is that what you call infidelity is man and woman in committed relationships, because that's how we call it, right? Committed relationships. So committed means you committed to something. Now the question is, what did you commit to? Right? There is no normal relationship format. If you met and you promised to each other that you will be honest with each other and you will not share intimate space, intimate behavior, intimate feelings, intimate uh, sexual contact with other people. If you promise that to each other, obviously when you breach this promise, you are out of integrity. Now, there are couples that make completely different commitment. They commit to uh, behave in a way that it's natural for them and they appreciate their freedom. That might define another form of relationship. As you know, some people choose open relationship. I don't advocate it or I don't judge it. I don't have a stand about it. I've been uh, in monogamous relationships, I try to be in open relationships. 
I know what works for me, what doesn't. What works for you and, and your partner, again, there is no common social norms about it or uh, necessarily normal, um, some common denominator. There is none of it. So you really need to find what you want. You need to find zones of comfort and discomfort for yourself and your relationship. The same will do, the same your partner will do, right? So if you decided to live an open relationship, that's fine. As long as both you and your partner are honest about everything that happened in your life. If you decided and promised to each other to disclose your encounters, that you're out of integrity when you don't. If you did not make such a promise, then probably you will choose what best for relationship. Some people might choose that it's best for relationship not to disclose the encounters, but they assumed that they will both have them. If that's what you agreed on, who can tell you what to do otherwise? The question is always, Make the inner audit all the time. What did you promise to another, someone who you truly cared about? And do you deliver on this promise? What did you promise to yourself? Maybe you promised to yourself when you were entering relationships that you will absolutely never share intimate space in whatever form with another human being. Now, if you do that, Again, you probably want to look carefully within and say, okay, I promised to myself that, and now I breached it. What actually happened? Did I breach it because of some weakness or impulsive desire? And again, we will look at that. Or I breached it because my nature is uh, polygamy. And Monogamous relationships are not for me, but I promised to myself in the past that out of moral obligation, uh, my, my assumption of what morality is, what society expects from me about morality. I mean, no, oh, don't start about morality with me, please. I'm just never going to be with that. Um, just Try to be honest with yourself. And if you promise to be honest with your partner, be, be honest. It's not always not always easy. <laughs> it's not even always good for relationships because there can be conflict. But you always need to look at what's important. How you much your integrity, to what degree it's important to you. Okay. And your relationship to what degree is important to me. I don't advocate lie to each other. Absolutely not. Yet, there are situations where probably it's safer not to disclose events that happen to you because of your weakness or because of your misunderstanding of the situation or whatever happened. It's better because you will not hurt you someone you care about. You disclose and you hurt person. I mean, there is no formula for that. You know, there is absolutely no formula. But if you did promise to be honest, despite the fact that both of you know that it might hurt and it might affect relationships, but if you made the promise, if you ask me, I say keep it. Keep it and you will of course, I can say we'll sleep better, but it's very self-centered talk then. Oh, I will sleep better. Well, it's not about you, I'm sorry. <laughs> not that in this world is that much about you. Um, you don't even exist, but that's another question. Right? Um, let's look at what drives us to what we call infidelity. Why we commit to one person and then, despite that promise to your partner and to yourself, we 
share intimate space with other human beings. And I don't want to invite you to think about that as right or wrong in those terms, not at all. I want to invite you to look deeply within and try to understand why it happens in the first place. And I don't want you to do shallow analysis like, oh, um, I want um, something new or what more often people do, it just becomes a responsibility of another. Or oh, she became fat and unattractive. Um, mm, that's not what I'm suggesting to do here. Or mm, I became that and another. Or oh, we grew apart and that. That's kind of look like objective picture to whatever degree. There's some objects out there, and that's what I mean objective. It's not a total and ultimate, it's just there are some objects and this is my relationship to, to my partner as an object and there is something changed and there is, there is a result, cause and effect of that. No. I say let's look at one single being is yourself and see what happens within yourself that leads you in the arms of another human being. So someone might say, uh, well, I just felt in love in such a, with such and such outside of my relationship. Okay, so what does that mean? I felt in love. What does it mean to you? I wish I could hear you, but I can't, right? I'm alone here, so I only can guess. And I will assume what a lot of people call I feel in love. I feel very passionate about What's passion? Passion is desire. Okay, if it's desire, what is desire? What provokes your desire? If we dissect our desires, what we can find that its impulse resulted uh, as the impulse that happened as a result of the thought. What thoughts provoked? The symbols. You really need to look at the landscape of your patterns in order to understand that. And there are different, very different thoughts that can lead you to this illusion of being in love with another human being immediately, instantly, and forever change your family situation, really. Um, and I don't exclude that actually you could fall in love with someone, no. But this is not what we're talking about. I really want to try to, to go with you in anatomy of things on kind of deeper level to understand what it all means for us. So if it's desire, what a thought could provoke it? The thought could be very different and if we would, you, we would work together with you, of course we would go through that process and understand exactly what's happening in your life. If you want to do it, please call me and I would be happy to do that. But for now, all we have is this conversation, not a conversation, a monologue. So, let's say your thought is, Oh my God, she has such fantastic body, I want it. Okay. That's very far from me in love. You objectified a woman. Let me, let me assume that I'm calling to, talking to a man, because I need to talk to one individual in order to make the, the point. Um, Women can have very similar thoughts, and please play with yours, understand yours, but allow me to speak to one individual because otherwise it would be really tough to do. So I want, I want that. I want that. Okay. What that means again? You see, I always will ask, yeah, but what does it mean? What does it mean? Let's go deeper and further. What does it mean? What does it mean? I want that woman. I want that body. I want that boy. What do you mean I want it? Does possessing something really beautiful make you feel better about yourself? Does this new body next to you when you walk, uh, I don't know, it's in, uh, you walk into your fancy car, let's say, does she define you in some different way? Is that what triggers your excitement? Or maybe that body and let me objectify you too. She looked at you in a way that said, there is no way you're going to get me. 
go try, right? Something like that. Now your thought is, what the? I'm gonna get you, bitch, right? It's all internal and it's not, it's not so clear, it's very subtle. It's very subtle. The work of the ego is extremely subtle. So, here now you are in competition with your ego. Your ego is in competition with your ego, yet the game is very subtle. She gave you that resistance, opportunity to feel that it will be a game, it will be a hunt. And you are the hunter, you are really good at hunting, and you love hunting. It gives you adrenaline, it gives you a kick. So here we go, now you are in the game. She gave you that look, she gave you that, ah, I'm tough, you're not gonna get me. And you are on the hunt, and you are hooked. You are a hunter, and you are hunted, you are hooked. Okay? Now, see, the passion really becomes a result of your thought, I'm going to get you, no, 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 I'm going to get you, right? And then you stop sleeping, sleepless, sleepless nights, started to draw the images of this fantastic, beautiful body, Oh, you know, together with yours, and you're moving in passion, and she's submitting to you and surrendering to you, and you're dominating her, and you're the boss. <laughs> okay? Your ego won. <laughs> or another picture you might draw. You know, she's dominating you, and as she promised, she, she will dominate you, and, and you will uh, be surrendered and weak, and she will totally overpower you, and uh, okay. whatever your fantasy is. It's all good, but the passion, the real passion, becomes the play of the ego. Okay. Another thought. Let's let's find what other thought could lead to that passion. It may be. Um, let me see what other, what other thought can. Be. Well, we already went through the comparison, right? When she is near me, my image will be boosted. We went through that. Right? And, but I want to touch on that. A lot of hunting game, and for many, especially men, forgive me guys, there is no uh, judgment in it. It just probably the fact we can have data on the statistics on how, how, how many more men in this game than you. You too. Don't get me wrong. I know that game too. <laughs> but this game of gonna score that, right? So the scoring, well, I'm, I'm gonna get that, I'm gonna score. And and obviously harder the game, more attractive the game can be. Or for some people who have different relationships with themselves, so insecurity level is kind of different, easier the prey, more exciting it is because you know you're gonna get it, so you're not gonna lose the game, you're gonna win it. So easier the, the game, easier the prey, if you see that she's totally willing, she's wearing all the very short stuff and, and he showing you everything she has and, and making the sexy move in front of you and sexy lips and that and another, it feels very safe to hunt because you're gonna get it. Right? You're gonna get it, you're gonna score. And what means score I means your ego looking for validation. I'm looking for validation because I don't have like word security and insecurity. It just, you know, that because it becomes a word that became a label. And I really don't like labels. You might know that if you, if you uh, spend some time with me. But the validation is, it's, it's very common thing. We all, we all say that. I want to be acknowledged for who I am, well not really, okay, that's another conversation, that is not who you are, but we assume that that's what we are, we have the image, and we really want to make sure the picture that we have of ourselves, and especially, well actually not especially, sometimes either or, so picture that we have of ourselves, and picture that others have of us, is very pretty picture, we really don't want picture that is not pretty, we don't want to think badly about ourselves, because then we feel ashamed and guilty and so on and so forth, and we definitely don't want other things very badly about us, poorly, 
lowly. We don't want low English. We want to have fantastic image. We want to think that everybody loves us, everybody admires us, everybody, uh, I don't know, some people go into oh, I want them to be jealous and envy. That's, that's another game. But we want to be appreciated, accepted, respected, admired, on and on and on. And this is a trap. Because then our behavior is led by that single desire to please the audience. And we find audience in every encounter that we have. Interestingly, even ourselves, we become our audience. If there's nobody else to convince that we are really good, we then do self-loving thing. You know, this whole... Oh, I don't, don't get me started. Oh, no, I need to start. Forgive me, I just, I just a little hot over here. In Panama, we spent winter in Panama, and it's uh, 900, I don't know, 48 degrees. It's so really hot. Put it right here near me, and you just have to forgive me. You just have to accept me for what it is. Um, what was I saying? Ah, self-loving. I love this subject. So what is this self-love? It's just such a popular uh, belief that, you know, everybody can say to you, uh, love yourself before you love others. Okay, fine. You can buy into any statement you want. What I don't really want us to play is this game to, to give you more illusions, to confuse you and to bring you suffering because one belief system will bring you to another belief system and they are conflicting and you are conflicted and it's a mess. So it's self-loving is really become self-soothing. That other word soothing, right? It's mean I don't feel good about myself so now I need to validate myself in in my own eyes. I want to mirror to myself the best possible image. And then we start to do affirmation, oh I'm nice, I'm good, I'm I'm good looking, I'm respected, I'm good. Uh, nothing wrong with that, because nothing wrong with anything. But, you are going into this perpetual line cir circle, circle cycle, because your image of yourself is not you. Your image does not matter. You cannot allow yourself to believe in your thoughts about yourself. Okay? So, when you soothe in yourself, that means you believe in it, and now you try to convince yourself to substitute one image or another and believe it. But you can't believe in it, it's not true. You have to stand as a witness and say, oh, that's what I thought about myself. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's now I thought about that. That I thought about myself. Oh, that's interesting too. But none of it is identified. If, as soon as you identify it, I'm, I'm sorry, honey, you're screwed. You're screwed because you are going to suffer to the end of your days. You can't identify yourself with any image, neither positive nor negative. You identify yourself with positive image, again, what it means positive negative, but let's play with that, right? You identify yourself with positive image, as soon as it's challenged, you know, the form is challenged, you are going to suffer. Because now, there is something to defend, you need to prove that what they think, or you think about yourself just now, is different from this image of yourself that truly identified with, so there's something to defend. Now there's a war. It can take so many different forms. Okay? So, no, oh boy, it's really hot. Thank you, guys. And I closed my windows because I want to make sure that you actually can hear me, not wind and uh, birds outside, as beautiful as it is. I don't have a microphone here, it's not professional equipment, it's just uh, I brought my camera with me to film the environment because it's very pretty. So. Mm. Identification, right? So, and, and when we try to validate ourselves in our own eyes, that means that we are already playing this game. You believe in yourself, now you need to restore your image that was challenged and the game goes on and your focus becomes, you become very self-centered. Now you play this self-soothing game, self, they call it self-loving, which I don't buy in, there's nothing of love there, it's illusion and then now you're fighting this illusion as soon as it moves right or left and, and here we go. Self-centeredness 
in my world, from where I stand, has nothing to do with self-love. And there is not such thing as self-love in the first place. It's just love. All there is is love, honey. So how it reflects in relationships to continue the point of infidelity. Every new unknown being can be seen as the point of validation. Okay? If you get her, him in bed, you are a winner. Whatever it means again. Uh, it can mean, ooh, I'm sexy. Especially uh, people who think that they were sexy before, but now the wife maybe doesn't pay that much attention to them because she's busy with your mold or the kids or whatever else. And he needs validation that he's still sexy. Or she needs validation that she's still young. We really don't like to age. So make sure that you support aging women because they don't like to age. Uh, and they need proof. I'm still, I still can do that. So let me go and try, and let me go and check it, and let me go prove to the world to myself, I'm still good. You know? So I score. Or someone can overcompensate, for example. And again, it's just thoughts. Different playing with different scenarios, what thoughts could be. Let's say you don't, mm, your financial situation is not uh, as perfect as you would like it to seem, so you're not making as much money. And everything in this world is measured by money. Oh boy. No escape from that, right? So you let's say you subscribe to the game uh, that money is important and uh, money define you, which they not, they sh they they're not defining factor, but you believe that they are. So you're not making enough money, now you need to overcompensate somewhere. And you need to soothe yourself. And you think, hmm, I can do that. If I don't make enough money, I can do that. It's very subtle. I don't even think you know your thoughts unless you sit in silence for long enough to really watch your thoughts as they pass by as clouds passing by. Don't be long to you, they're just passing by. But you believe in them and here we go. The thing is that when you feel excited about another person, we really don't know the thoughts behind the excitement. We don't we don't really acknowledge what led us to this excitement and thoughts can trigger your excitement points a lot because you get in the game another thought that can trigger again I'm still speaking to men uh, let's say your wife um, dissatisfied with you maybe you don't help in the household, maybe you're not making money because you're lazy, I'm sorry, uh, so I have to point that, because you don't make efforts, or because you don't feel that you're accountable for something, or maybe she actually does it for no good reason at all, but she points to you and shows you that she displays you openly, and sometimes maybe in words that really unpleasant, but she's dissatisfied and disappointed. Here we go. Your image of yourself is challenged. And now, absolutely unconsciously, as you meet this nice woman, that it, she feels and looks like a very opposite person to your wife. She feels so warm, charming, uh, uh, very safe. She admires you. Oh, this, is, this, is, this is the game you absolutely will subscribe to, I'm telling you. Watch it all the time. She, she plays the game. Ah, you're fantastic! Oh my god! You're so talented! You. Uh, what, what, what other things? Ooh, your body, you look, you look like you've had a shot. Or what else? What else we, we, we can play with here? Uh, look, oh my god, you're so deep. You're so deep. You rock my world, you're teacher, you're a great teacher. Anyways, you got the point, right? So everything you kind of insecure about, and it's and it's soothed from outside, and now she becomes your mule, she becomes your idol, she becomes 
the, 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 the light of your life, the sun in the dark, the, oh, you got it, right? So, when we say, I fall, fell in love with the person before, here's infidelity. My suggestion to you, meditate. <laughs> What, do you, what does it mean? I'm not saying repress. I say take time to understand what drives your passion. Okay? What drives the impulse itself? I don't say analyze do you, should you do that, should you not? Is it moral? Is it not? Is it good for your wife? Is it bad for your wife? Is it good for yourself? None of that. But take time and efforts as hard as it could be sometimes. To simply evaluate why I am drawn to this individual. What is she having to hook me? Or what is he offering me that my ego desires so much? Okay? When you do that, you might make a choice, but the choice will be conscious. Okay. At that point, the choice can be conscious. Do I engage in display of the ego and engage in the relationships and then I have to do this effect of that? Okay. Or I keep being present to my addiction, my addiction to be soothed in a lot of different ways, my addiction to validation, my addiction to, to avoiding boredom, it's another piece, right, I didn't mention that, it's one of the many, there's so many, so it's very hard to touch, the common denominator and all of that is our relationship with our ego, our understanding of our ego. And we all have it because we are human beings and somehow this nature brought us to, to, to this form that has all the components where ego is it's just one of it. <laughs> and we have it, we call it such obviously, but it's a personality that is, has certain characteristics. It's a play of the mind. So that's what your mind does not like. It doesn't like boredom. It doesn't like the same old. The grass, as you know, is always green out there because here is everything I already know it. I know how I, how I wake up with my wife, how I go to bed with my wife, I know her in the kitchen, I know her in the bedroom, I know her in the, in the living room, I know her in the car, I know her, I mean, okay? So you know it. The mind wants something new. It doesn't mean that that new is better than that. It just new. So when you say, oh, it's passion, no, it's new. It excites you because it's new. And again, it's not bad or wrong, and it's not right or good. It's neither of it, it just is. And by seeing it, now you have opportunity to do something about it. For example, you might choose to actually follow it and consciously say to yourself, you know, I'm choosing to have something new in my life because it enhances my experience. But then, of course, post effect of that is that there is your partner to whom you committed to have more monogamous relationships. Committed relationships, committed means intimacy shared only in house, not outside of relationship. Now you have to deal with that. You can consciously choose to follow your passion and desire for newness and experience this newness and there's some enhancement of your life might happen or might not, whatever it means. But it doesn't mean that you should not deal with your existing relationships one way or another. Because if it doesn't excite you any longer, this new, then there will be another new, and then there will be another new because that new becomes old, as you understand, right? And your desire for newness does not change and your situation at home doesn't change, so you are losing every time in this, in this game, okay? Because you are not satisfying yourself in the long run. You only get after, go on, after immediate gratification, which is 
okay, that's fine, that's what you choose and it's okay, but you still hooked, you still addicted to newness and as any addiction it's never resolved unless it's seen. People like to, to, to use the word healed. Let me just say seen. When you see something for what it is, without denial, without mental constructs that will change the appearance of things, things transcend. They have this things have this miraculous ability to transcend themselves when you really deeply see things for what they are. Okay? So when you see clearly that it's your boredom that leads you to new exciting passion without judgment to yourself what you can consider if you choose to is well there are a couple of things you can do I mean there are probably many things you can do but a couple that I want to point to one is simply don't follow your addictive impulses let's say you sit and it can be not only about relationship and, and infidelity, uh, it can be related to anything at all. You, let's say, bored and uh, you want to do something about it because it's unbearable sense of boredom when you go and eat and you know people get fat because of that. Uh, one of the reasons why they do. Or you go and gamble, or you go and, go and drink, or you go, uh, you have sex, sex addiction, you go to bars. Or, Whatever your, your, your escape from boredom is, it's still temporal escape, you understand it, right? So, the, the escape from the escape is to see it for what it is and don't follow the thought. Because the impulse is the result of the thought. So the thought is, I'm bored, I can't stand it. And if you say, I can't stand it in your head, consciously, subconsciously, you can't stand it. You, you, you move and you do whatever is there to do for you <laughs> right now in your life. Yeah? Follow your addiction of any kind. But your choice can be, hmm, I'm bored. But there is no this, this element of, I can't stand it. I'm going to go f uh, do her <laughs> or whatever. Uh, just sit with that. I can't stand it. I, I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm seeing it's difficult for me and keep sitting. Mm. It feels difficult, yeah, it feels difficult. Mm. Mm. It doesn't feel that difficult anymore. It's kind of boring, yeah. Say more, say more. As thoughts quiet, as you quiet in yourself, you chatter, you will see that suddenly there's so much new around you, within you. You could be surprised if you if you're going from this gross sensations to subtleness of everything in the world that seems like it's it's stale and nothing happening around you suddenly will see so much happening and it's so rich it's so rich your inner world is so rich your outer world is so rich everything changing every second every moment is different if you really deeply look into that if you actually pay attention to that if you pay attention to what happened on a very subtle level. Hmm? Oh, so hot, so hot, so hot. Let's see. So another thing. Another thing you can do when you really honestly acknowledge that you are uh, uh, moved, you are moved to find destruction in relationships outside of your marriage is this sense of boredom therefore what you might choose is to find the way to spice up your family life there's so many ways to do it you can play a game anytime uh, you can um, uh, call me, email me and I'll be happy to run some training with you, honey. Uh, so many things you can do to revitalize your relationship with your partner, whether you're married or not, it doesn't matter. Every relationship at the same time can feel stale. It's just nature of things. You know it, so it becomes a little bit boring. It could be. If you operate on this shallow level, it feels boring. 
But if you live life that is life of inner depth, I don't like what spiritual, okay? Because everything is from where I see it, everything is spiritual. There is nothing is not spiritual, okay? The fact that you're wearing yoga clothes and do woo things, that doesn't make you any more spiritual than anybody else. It doesn't make your life any more spiritual, okay? That's my ranting mother assembly lifestyle right? and, and perceptions of what is spiritual. So everything is spiritual, but, but there is a depth your experience can be experienced very deeply. It can be experienced on such a gross, shallow level and it's very dissatisfactory. Or it can be extremely fulfilling and satisfying to, to live deeply inside, to feel life so intensely, so present, be so alive. But it requires commitment and some work initially to unpeel yourself like an onion because we are we are like an onion that is just this this beautiful vulnerable raw heart using the words and then we put those little protections in ourselves and then we get busy with a lot of activities and it's all become you know very dusty and and covered it all up and it requires commitment to some work, in a work that you unfortunately not always can do by yourself, I can guarantee you because I went through so much of that with clients because I'm so much to it on my own. Because we tend to resist, we tend to defend, we tend to protect our image even in our own eyes. So this unpeeling requires a lot of work and it's not always easy but it's doable and always doable. So, as I said, as soon as you acknowledge that you are moved towards another person because of your sense of boredom, your conscious choice can be, hmm, why don't I take my relationship and do something about it? Make it more interesting. What am I moved? What is my energy feeling like? My energy is feeling like co-creating maybe something together and build business together. That's what we do with Jan. So they won and we are very happy about it. It's so exciting, always very creative. That's why we're creating this movement, hopefully, um, project, the, the, the training program that we call the couples business, right? Because it's so exciting to create something together. Yes, there are arguments and there is disputes and it's hot and it's spicy and it's interesting. It's stimulating, okay? This is just the one way. And maybe you guys decide to travel because you live in the same walls again and again and again every day you wake up and you go to bed and it's the same the same the same some people start to feel very imprisoned by the same environment again and again especially if you are doing uh, some uh, if you are your career is not exciting for you if your job is not exciting is not fulfilling is not stimulating it absolutely for sure will affect your relationships as well because you will have this heavy energy all together and I bet you will start to grow the belly and women start to grow butts and eat a lot and one leads to another. Keep yourself alive. Keep yourself in shape. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, I'll say the word because there is something that we perceive to be spiritual, right? This, this deepening our cells, sense of present sense of experience, of relationship is life, is everything around us and within us, right? So that goes with you. you can play games with your lover. You some people dress up, oh boy, do whatever, dress up, get a whip. I have one. It works very well. All every time. Ah uh, uh, dress leather and boots if that's the, the, the case. Or go to bed a movie. Go to theater, join the theater, join some clubs, join some comedy, become stand-up comic, I don't know, uh, change the job, become firefighter. I'm not sure what to tell you, but I bet you get your creative juices going and you can turn around your life without being challenged for losing your integrity. subject. If you have any questions, I will post um, this video on Facebook. Maybe it's useful, maybe it's a complete waste of your time. But I had a good time while <laughs> sharing it, so 
please share your thoughts, please share um, your concerns, please share your questions. If you want me to reflect on some other topics, let me know. I will be happy to do that. It's much easier for me to do that than just um, coming up to something that I think you care about. Just let me know. I love you from all my heart, but I know you are not. Love is all there is, and you're definitely touched by that. I hope somehow. Be well, be free, be prosperous, be yourself. But to do that, understand yourself as. Oh, man. Thank you.